This is Ted Seifert of Zaner Ag Hedge coming to, you, coming to you from the CME floor for Traders Exclusive. Here this morning, I would like to talk about the corn market. And, uh, you know, in the past few weeks, we've had a nice bounce off the lows in corn, really kind of culminating from a report that we had two Tuesdays ago from the, the uh, CME, or from the USDA, giving us the new crop balance sheet for the first time here this year. That new crop corn carryover came in at 2.153 billion bushels. That is a rather big number. However, it came in about 150 million bushels below what the trade had been expecting, the average trade guess. Uh, and it came in well below the worst case scenario expectations that some analysts had been looking for of a 2.5 to 2.6 billion bushel carryover for corn. So with that tighter corn carryover, the idea is that uh, going forward, we might need to add in a little bit more weather premium for corn uh, on the idea that if we were to have some weather issues this year, that carryover could shrink down into some levels that could be tighter and justify some higher pricing. Now, the USDA currently is using a 168 national average yield on their production model. That is a large number for them to be using for a trend line yield because that would represent the third largest corn yield we've ever seen. That would also be 0.4 below the second largest corn yield we've ever seen. So basically, the USDA is looking for a near record corn yield, and that's their benchmark number. Some in the trade have been qu are questioning whether that number is attainable or that's a number that we should be starting with. Obviously, if we have a very good growing season, that number is attainable, but we gotta have, we're going to have to have a near perfect growing season in order to get there. So uh, when we look at that USDA balance sheet and we take that yield down just a little bit, all of a sudden, we're looking at a relatively tight corn balance sheet compared to what we've seen the last couple of years, and that might be good enough a reason to see some higher prices in corn. Also, there is some ideas floating around out there that we might lose some corn acres compared to when we took the surveys back in March of what farmers would be planting because the price of soybeans have come up dramatically. So there may be some last minute switching towards beans. If that's the case, that even, makes it even harder to hit the USDA's production number right now. So. Right now, uh, in, in the last 24 hours, we've had a bit of a setback in the corn market. Currently, we're down about 10 and a half here for the day. Uh, that is based on the Fed speak yesterday when the Fed minutes were released. It seems likely that the Fed is going to be raising rates here next month. That has really put a lot of strength into the dollar index and taken some of that inflationary trade out of the markets and away from commodities. So commodities as a whole have come down. Also, in the near term, Corn is about 75% planted as of last Sunday, so we are moving further and further towards being completed with corn plantings. And usually when we're about 70% planted in corn, we get a multi-week setback before we do in fact start adding some weather premium into the markets. So I guess what I'm looking at here is that in the near term, if we are going to have a bit of a pullback in the corn market, that might be a bit of an opportunity uh, to be looking at the long side of corn for the longer term as we get into the growing season to see what sort of weather that we might have. I would use like a vertical call spread or an option strategy, something where we can define the risk going in and have that on to see if we do get a bit of a weather issue with a lot of, a lot of weather men talking about a transition from El Nino to La Nina potentially causing some problems with this growing season. So keep an eye out for that. Once again, this has been Ted Seifert of Zaner Ag Hedge coming to you from the CME floor talking here for Traders Exclusive. Have a great day, everybody.